in this video we're going to take a more in-depth look at the LED cube. Now the last time you saw the LED cube that I built, which is a 4x4x4 four by four by four LED cube, it was actually just laying with all the wires hanging off and it was all kind of messy. Since then I've actually mounted it to a board more permanently. I trimmed the wires down and, and mounted these little rods. You probably can't see that in the video, but mounted these little metal rods that go up so it gives it a really cool skeletal look um, and it looks really great right um, next to my bed actually and it's pretty bright too so it works great as a night light let me see if I can get that going for you a little bit um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is how the heck does this thing work you've got 64 LEDs here um, and it doesn't look like each LED has its own wire, so how is each LED actually being controlled? Because we all know an LED has a cathode and an anode, so you would think that I would need 64 anode wires, right? Because I could tie all the cathodes together, but then I could just I would run a wire to each one's anode and then just give it a positive voltage. Well, actually, that's one way of doing it, but not very efficient. You would need 64 pins, which I don't have because I actually used an Atmega 328, which only has, I think, uh, 12, maybe 14 outputs. I actually controlled this entire cube, which is 64 LEDs, off 12 pins. And we'll get to how I did that in a second. But by the way, if you recognize the Atmega 328, that's because it's very popular and it's used in the Arduino. Um, and I even have the headers here to program it with a USB cable. Um, and I actually use the Arduino code to program this cube. But you don't have to. In fact, originally I had this design and it worked with a pick. But something happened, the code didn't work, I ran out of the demo version on micro C. Anyways, it's another story, but I ended up switching back over to the AVR here. So, let's first look at how this thing is. Well, let's look at the architecture. So, we have basically an 8x8 eight eight grid. If you're looking at looking at it like as an X and a Y, you have an 8x8 eight eight grid, 8 times 8 gives you 64 split into four four by four grids like you have here and that's all this is in fact the only thing I did was build the grid up I didn't do it physically but I did it on paper and then stacked these four by four by four grids up and that's how the cube is designed and that's how it works but let's get to how this thing how I control the LEDs using all these these minimal amount of pins and then we'll get to the control and all that in a second as well but look we need to first look at a 4x4 four four grid and that'll make it things a little bit easier to understand so like I said before all LEDs have a cathode and an anode and if you notice here it's it looks like all the LEDs are connected together that's because they are each all right, let's label. All right, so we have rows going up. Let me line it up with the camera. So we have columns and we have rows. Now, with this design, I have all of the rows connected together by each, each LED's anode. So I tied all the anodes together in every row and then all of the cathodes together in each column. So basically, if I needed to turn one of these LEDs on in this 4x4 four four grid here, let's say we wanted to turn this one on. Then I would turn this rows, or the, I mean this columns cathode on, and this rows anode on. And then you line it up, and it would turn that one on. So that's how the entire system works. In fact, each one of these uh, if you look down to the next level, 
I have these long bars that go down, and that connects actually each row or each level's cathodes together. So everything is tied together in a big giant 8x8 grid. So that's the basic thing. You do it out on paper, and then you bring it out here, and that, and you, if you look more closely at it, it's it's actually quite cool because you see all these little wires that connect all the levels together and stuff, and it's, it's really cool. So anyways, let's get back to the grid. So how am I controlling more than one LED at a time? Well, let's say you wanted to do that. Let's say you wanted to light up this LED here and this LED here. Well, logic would tell you, well, light up this one's cathode and light up this one's anode to get that one on, but also light up this one's anode and this one's cathode. Well, you could do that and you would light up this one and this one, but you would also light up this one and this one. So you light up LEDs that you don't want to light up. And that's sort of the genius behind this whole design because when you look at it, it looks like more than one LED is on at a time, but it really isn't. At any given point in time when you're looking at this, there is only one LED on at a time. It doesn't look like it because the human eye cannot detect those very tiny, small times that the LEDs are on and off for. We turn LEDs on and off so fast that the human eye cannot even tell. Like, right, let me click the light off here, see if we can give it some more. See? I'm actually lighting them up so fast in microseconds that it looks like they're all on. But uh, the truth is I'm running a loop. So I wish I could do a demo, like, right now. No. My animations are too quick to even zero in, but... I have links in the sidebar or in the video responses. I don't know what I'll do yet. But take a look at those and I explain multiplexing. That's what this is called, multiplexing. And I explain all that and break it down actually to how things actually work. So anyways, we have a big giant 8x8 grid, but that doesn't tell us anything about how I consolidated all of the pins. So we have an 8x8 grid. That means I... If you look at it, we looked at the 4x4, four four, that would mean I would need 4 and 4 pins to control that grid. That gives me a total of 8 pins. But if you looked at an 8x8 eight eight grid, I would need 8 and 8, which gives me 16. But I told you already that I only used 12 pins off of my microcontroller here. So what I actually did was further multiplex it. So I had those 16 brought out. In fact, if you count these wires down here, that's 16 wires. But I further multiplex it out. So I knew I now had a, an 8x8 grid, but could I make those two 8x8s into more grids? And that's exactly what I did. I took half of those, half of those 16 pins and gridded them out, basically, into 4x2 grids. So it gets kind of complex, but basically I have, well, how do I have it? Four by two. Yeah, I have, if you look here, it's, it even confuses me. But take a look at my multiplexing, because when you look at it all out on paper, it makes a lot more sense. But we have eight pins that are brought out to transistors here, which give me the ability to grid them out as well so I can make it. I control those transistors just like this, but I actually do it by a 4x2 grid. So 4x2 gives me 8, right? But 4 plus 2 is 6. So, so basically we have two 4x2 grids. I'm sure I'm confusing you now. Add those together. So I have 4 plus 2 for the one grid, gives me 6. And 4 plus 2 for the other grid, that gives me 6 total of 12 pins. And that's the LED cube. Thanks for watching.